October, right? This is October, and it's still hot. Is it the third? It is the third. The third. You know what? My brother Eric Winslet. It's his birthday today, and you're not there. You know he's a full on graduate, 1981. And look at there, number seven. Get for out of four. bounds. There no we way. go at the 49 yard. And I haven't called him yet. Now that was Aron Dixon. Now number seven. He's been hurt. He'd come back and uh, he's playing now. He's, his ankle's been hurt. They put him at tail back there. Good. You know, we've got to see Oran back there. He's been nursing a sore ankle here. So if you graduate in the class of 81, you need to call Eric Winslet and wish him a happy There's birthday. There's Coach Rankin. Hey, Coach, there he is. Look at this Star Wars headset he's got. Look at that. Yeah. He's listening to WNUE or I something. I believe he's got us tuned in. He's got it He's got it on B105 or, you know. It's 37 coach. seconds. Second and five. There we go. Catch on the play. Look like Fabian Porter out of bounds. Hit the 24 yard line. Dax Yoder drags him out. I tell you what, you're right, Wendell. That Roberts can throw that fade, buddy. Well, he thought that was a, a little out pattern, but uh, they did they go out of bounds? They stopped. He the sure court. did. All out right. of bounds. Oh, well, they're in a hurry up, but good throw by Drew. I wouldn't give you anything for the first four he threw, but the last two have been right on the money. I tell you what, perfect. And you know what, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, sometimes you run a play, and I haven't been an offensive coordinator, you run a play and it works, and you figure it's not going to work again, right? Oh, well, so you run it again. <laughs> well, <laughs> the fade, I, I mean, of course, you know, you say, look, beat me. Beat me with it. If you can beat me, good. If you can't, but Corey Scott on the fade, especially to the wide side, as you saw last time, with, a, with 510 Frank Merrill, you isolate him on that and just ask him to, to stop it. Let's ask this young lady, what's the most exciting thing about being a Viking cheerleader? The most exciting thing about being a Viking cheerleader would have to be um, just getting the crowd excited. You like to get the crowd excited? Yeah, it's fun. It's just fun to be out in front of people. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, and you know what? She is great. She's also the captain of the of the cheerleaders. That's correct, isn't it? Yes. And she's really great. I mean, today I thought our pep rally was real good. I wish there were a little bit more involvement, yeah. I think. But as they go, that was pretty good. And me and Coach Craig are coming back. The Blues Brothers are they, coming back. They will return. I'm getting the band back together again. <laughs> and me and Coach Craig are going to return. That'd be great. They love it. They love that. That never gets old. We've been in, see... Coach Craig's been in jail for a year. I had to get him out. <laughs> get out of bounds. That all way. Number three. Complete the number three for Fort Walton. That'll be. We can't wait for you to Fabian do that play Porter. by play for us. I'm paying attention to Camilla here. Well, let's pay attention to this game. 22 seconds. I thought Camilla was going to do some play by play for us. Well. But we couldn't get her to, to get off of that thing, well, could we? Well, you know what? When I'm interviewing her, it smells better. I hate to tell you this. <laughs> All right, the Vikings. Let me get it up here. First and 10 from the 15. Roberts drops a pass. Throws in the end zone. Oh, just off the fingertips. Number seven, Oren Dixon. Incomplete. It'll stop the clock. 17.8 seconds. Not just a little air under there. You know, now on the other side, uh, you have another freshman. Defending Corey Scott, 5'10, 155 pound Alonzo Nix. And that time, of course, they went away from Corey Scott, but still, the fade is still there. You know, I mean, I don't see how in the world they can defend it. They'll send Scott oh, to the far side. It. Well, what they're doing now, they've got one guy short, one guy long. They're, now they're defending it. Now they are. They're, they're Porter and him. Scott to the far side. The pass to Porter complete. It'll take it to the eight. Let's see if we can get the clock stopped. They, did, they got one more timeout. This will be Sterling Riggs unless they want to throw to the end zone. 11.4 seconds left. Well, good thing Watkins, they adjusted. They doubled up. They doubled up on uh Well, hold Carter on. Let's Scott. find out what we ought to do here. Should we go for it or kick the field goal? I think we should kick the field goal because uh. Sterling will make it. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think we discovered a relationship here. <laughs> Sterling. Now, Sterling. Now, Sterling. Uh, He's yeah. been good. Yeah, he's been he's good. He's been doing good lately. He made a great tackle. We were talking to his father. He made player of the week last week because the Vikings won last week, and I guess we talked about it before. They won 10-3. to three. The only as close as Pensacola High came to scoring was on a kickoff, and if Sterling hadn't made the tackle, we might have lost. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would have been a, I don't know if we'd lost, but 
it would have sure been a good uh, it sure helped. it'd have been tough but uh and so he got uh he got player of the week just for doing that one thing there you go the, co the, the call according to the cheerleaders kick the field goal and guess what they're going to run it <laughs> well apparently they're going to try one more maybe in the end zone they, well, they better get they better not i feel like they got enough time well they don't want to third down he'll drop the pass he'll look in the end zone the quick out incomplete a little bit short well, now you get the opportunity see well that wasn't a very good pattern by by uh, corey uh you know he didn't have any a good he, he ran a little out pattern there but you've got to really make a hard move on the inside to set that up and then jam to the outside and no, nobody was fooled by his move Ooh, that was a long pass out there yeah too. they <laughs> hung out there it could have gone the other way okay here's sterling give here's, my hand here's the good snap it's down it's up it's long enough and it's good that's good way. there she's saying i told you i told you, you. I, told right. you. Right. I told Anybody? you 24 to 14 homecoming boy you gotta like it that's a good drive by Fort Walton there. Uh, excellent throwing by Drew Roberts. And, you know, we said there were two things the Vikings want to do tonight. They want to run misdirection. They want to be able to throw the football. And they weren't able to throw the football too well, but now they've thrown the ball real well. And you know what? That's going to make their offense so much better, so much better when you can throw the football and spread this bunch out because, as we've seen, when they play defense, they run to the ball real well. And we've said that before, haven't we? We have. What are we going to talk about now? i tell you what we could talk about. We got 24 to 14 homecoming here. It's awful hot in here. Let me ask you, you look like a pretty good judge. How old would you say Mr. Brock is um, here? Pick, well, just pick an age. What do you think? 25 tops. Oh, oh Wendell with that $50 bill hanging out there in his pocket. Oh, my. 24. Now, That's Aaron's 24. His son's 24. When was 124? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Camilla, Cam you know, I would have believed you if you'd have estimated it a little bit. Camilla, do you know what a tall, handsome fella has for breakfast? No. Well, this morning I had a bagel <laughs> and a glass of orange juice about that tall. <laughs> Sterling to kick off. It looked like he's going to squib it in at a ball at 35. They'll pick it up. Oh, still loose. They better wrap up this guy. I'll tell you what, he can run, too. He'll get wrapped up there. I'll tell you what, Anthony McKinney grabbed him, pulled him down. That ends the half. The Vikings 24, the Watkins Golden Tornadoes from Laurel, Mississippi 14. We're having exciting halftime action here. Stick around, we'll be right back. Business owners, football season is here. And you know, every year Channel 6 replays the local football games. Many of your customers watch, record and rewatch these games. To buy an ad on this highly effective medium, call Christine Pinson's 314-8110. Hi, this is Tyranny Barnes, Fort Walton Beach High School, class of 2001. Go Vikings! Show your team support on Student Spotlight. Call 3148-110 or pick up the form at Emerald Coast Cable. The rates are really affordable. Go Vikings! Have you ever bought anything that the next day you wished you hadn't? At Bulldog Motors in Crestview, that won't happen. Hi, I'm Tom Ward with Bulldog Motors. We not only strive to provide you a clean, quality, late model cars, trucks, and vans, but we give you a two-day, no-hassle, money-back guarantee on every vehicle we sell. So come to Crestview's newest late model car center, Bulldog Motors, where we take a bite out of high prices. We don't want to be the biggest, we just want to be the best. Call us today at 682-8788. We stay open late. Bulldog Motors. One of few good reasons to bank at First National Bank of Crestview. How about custom checking accounts tailored to just your needs? Checking accounts for people that write lots of checks, very few checks, or want to draw interest on their accounts. Whatever you need, First National Bank of Crestview has it. Add to the conveniences such as two locations, the most drive through windows in town, 24-hour automatic tellers, and you start to see why it just makes sense to bank with your hometown bank. That's First National Bank of Crestview, your hometown bank. At Computers Friendly, we're your computer-friendly computer store. Let our staff handle all your Windows NT networking applications, business, and how about setting up a network at home? We can help you wire your new home, too. And need help building a home page? Our talented staff can design one just for you. We do all our own warranty work and build our machines right here in our shop. Call Computers Friendly Incorporated today, and don't settle for anything less with your computer needs. 
We are back, ladies and gentlemen. We have reached halftime here when we have the Pride of the Miracle Strip out on the field right now. Homecoming 97 here at Etheridge Stadium. Again, everybody, this is Aaron Brock along with Anna Camilla. And right now, we... Uh, we'd like to say we'd like to thank the administration, faculty, and staff, and students of Fort Long Beach High School, and we proudly welcome to 97 Homecoming. We'd like to extend a warm greeting to the many Viking alumni who are with us this evening, including myself. <laughs> the thing for our Homecoming festivities this year is the journey into the future. And now we'd like to just sit back and listen to the great sounds of the Pride of the Miracle Strip.
Yet again, ladies and gentlemen, another award-winning performance from the Pride of the Miracle Strip uh, for Long Beach High School Marching Vikings. And at this time, we'd like to turn the time over, over to Anna Camello with the presentation of the Fort Walton Beach Homecoming Court. Thanks, Aaron. We'd like to present Katie Letcher, the 1996 Homecoming Representative. She's the daughter of Sam and Mary Letcher of Dustin. She attends Okaloosa Walton Community College, majoring in physical therapy. Katie is a merit scholar and plans to attend the University of Central Florida after finishing at OWCC. She is presently also volunteering at a pediatric therapy center. Escorting Katie is Johnny Bennett, son of Dale Bennett of Destin. Johnny is vice president of the student council and a member of the Key Club and Alpha Tau Sigma. Robin Miller, also representing the 1996 Homecoming Court, is the daughter of June and Jack Miller of Fort Walton Beach. She is presently attending Florida State University. Christopher Drake, son of William and Marlon Drake, is escorting Robin tonight. He is a senior this year at Fort Walton Beach High School where he is a member of the swim team, Alpha Tau Sigma, Optimist Club, Science Honor, and the Forensics team. Christopher is a state qualifier on the swim team, listed in the Who's Who among American high school students, national merit semifinalist, and a YMCA swim team member. He works as a lifeguard at the YMCA and volunteers at Fort Walton Beach Medical Center. Now our 1997 homecoming queen and her court. Our freshman attendant is Amy Benezzi, daughter of Bob and Patty Benezzi of Destin. Amy is a cheerleader and is vice president of the freshman class. In addition, she is a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Amy's escort are her father, Bob Benezzi, and Mitchell Kopeck. Mitchell is the son of Gary Kopeck and Chong Kim of Mary Esther. He is a member of the Beta Club and Mu Alpha Theta. Representing the sophomore class is Naportia Dania Miller, daughter of Andrew and Cindy Miller of Fort Walton Beach. Naportia is escorted by her brother Preston Shumpert and Bo Grelling, son of Alden and Terry Grelling of Destin. Bo is a member of the swim team, the key club, and youth in government. Our junior class attendant is Candace Bolden, daughter of Chief Master Sergeant Larry and Janet Bolden of Mary Esther. Candace is a member of Kiets and Harambe. In addition, she is a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and Future Business Leaders of America. Candace is being escorted by her father, Larry Bolden and Jason Ryan Grzynski, son of Ted and Pong Grzynski of Destin. Jason is a member of the Forensics Team and the Health and Medicine Club. He also is a member of Beta Club and Alpha Tau Sigma. He received the A.N.T. Mitchell Award in 1996, also 1997. Ashley Lane Adams is our senior class attendant. Ashley is the daughter of James and Peggy Adams of Destin. She is president of the Optimist Club and vice president of the French Club. 
Ashley has been involved in three school plays this, and is a member of the forensics team. She has also been awarded an academic letter and pins. Ashley is escorted by her father, James Ferris Adams, Sr., and John Daniel Murchison. Daniel is the son of John and Linda Murchison of Fort Walton Beach. Daniel is president of National Honor Society and Youth in Government. He is also on the varsity track and cross-country teams, the academic team, and is a member of the Alpha Tau Sigma. Daniel received the Auntie Mitchell Award and the Rennesler Math Mathematics and Science Award. We are now pleased to present to you Fort Walton Beach High School's 1997 homecoming queen, Mina Cohan. Mina is the daughter of David Young A. Cohan of Mary Esther. She's president of Tri-M, section leader of the band's drumline and a member of Valhalla. Mina has been named to the all-county and all-state choruses and the all-south and all-county honor bands. She received superior ratings at solo and ensemble competitions and was named to Valkyrie and Norseman. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, the homecoming queen and her court here at Etheridge Stadium. Mina's escorts are her father, David Cohan, and Joseph Campbell, son of William Campbell of Destin. Joseph is a senior class president, chair of the Inner Club Council, and key club secretary. He is also a member of the Optimist Club, the Beta Club, the Academic Team, the French Club, and Student Council. During his sophomore and junior years, he was on the swim team. Joe has earned both an academic letter and a sports letter and has served as a delegate to Boys State. The flower girl for tonight is Bethany Rose McCullough, daughter of Stephen and Patricia McCullough of Fort Walton Beach. Bethany is in first grade at Edwins Elementary School and participates in gymnastics, tap, and ballet. Our crown bearer is C.J. Scroggins, son of Jeff and Dora Scroggins of Fort Walton Beach. C.J. attends the Children's Developmental and Discovery Center and participates in football, basketball, and baseball. There you go. <laughs> And now for the highlight of this evening's show, the crowning of our 1997 homecoming queen, Mina Cohan, by Robert Walton, principal of Fort Walton Beach High School. Congratulations, Mina. We are pleased to give you and present to you as our school this year's homecoming queen. And as most homecomings go, we will now, uh, the people here at Atheridge will now stand for the playing of the alma mater. There you have it, the 1997 homecoming queen, Ander Court. And the people at Fulham Beach High School and the Pride of the Miracle Strip would like to thank the many people who gave their time and efforts to make this homecoming a success. 
Special thanks to Simply Ogan for providing the tuxedos for tonight's escorts. I'd also like to thank uh, Colonel Richard Havity, the aerospace science instructor at Fort Walton Beach High School, for supplying the Sabre team and the other uniformed officers of ROTC. few minutes here we have a have a break here as as uh, we uh, the school recognize some of the people that have helped them out with homecoming we uh, as a as an alumni I sit back and I think you know this this is homecoming is nothing but tradition at Fort Long Beach High School to come back to be able to meet old friends and the people that participated in tonight, especially the students that participated tonight, come back next year to experience how special homecoming truly is. So, uh, And that'll do it here for Homecoming 97. We'll be back after the short break. Stay tuned. Have you ever bought anything that the next day you wished you hadn't? At Bulldog Motors in Crestview, that won't happen. Hi, I'm Tom Ward with Bulldog Motors. We not only strive to provide you with clean, quality, late model cars, trucks, and vans, but we give you a two-day, no-hassle, money-back guarantee on every vehicle we sell. So come to Crestview's newest late model car center, Bulldog Motors, where we take a bite out of high prices. We don't want to be the biggest, we just want to be the best. Call us today at 682-8788. We stay open late. Bulldog Motors. Back at Joe Edwards Stadium, third quarter action. Alan Winslet, Wendell Brock, and Aaron Brock here in the booth. Along with my buddy Rick McNoly switching downstairs and some of the finest cameramen, I guess probably in all of Okaloosa County, right here working for Emerald Coast Cable Television. The best, the best cameramen in Fort Walton Beach. <laughs> in, in this, the best cameramen in this park tonight. We got us a game here tonight. I'm telling you, Tyler Radcliffe to kick off the Vikings on top, 24-14. Well, I tell you what, it's been a lot of showboating here tonight. Interceptions, long passes, some great offense. And stick, stick around, stay tuned, but we got a lot more action coming up. The ball taking a two-yard line. 
Oren Dixon still on his feet, knocked down hard. I tell you what, but he was weaving and looking. They brought him out to the 27. Well, he needs to congratulate his friend there, Tony Lovelace, put a good block on the line to get up field there. Oren Dixon, we mentioned earlier, he'd been hurt, and it's the old, you know, if you're out hurt, somebody takes your place. Tony Lovelace moved <laughs> the tailback, and he hasn't relinquished it, although tonight, Oren Dixon will be at tailback, and as you'll see, they'll move uh, Tony Lovelace back to fullback, which is the offensive uh, backfield at the beginning of the season. Ah, nope, they're gonna put Aron Dixon at the slot there. They're gonna run a lot of counters in this direction. They'll bring Scott Cuvion to the near side to give this time to number one, Lovelace off the left side, running hard, carrying some tacklers. He get knocked down here. Pick up, a, let's see here, about the 39th where they're gonna put it down. Up close to the first down, Wendell. Good play there, just a little simple give. That's a, that's a the give to the long back there sets up everything else. It sets up your counters. If you're going to run the option, it sets up the archers. You can run your counters off of it. You establish that, that runner up the middle, and uh, Tony is excellent at that. That's where he's been playing all year, like we said earlier, and uh, he hits the hole as quickly as him. He's about 185 pounds, and he's probably got a 150-yard night going right now. Drew Roberts. The junior quarterback for the Vikings to give up the middle that time, bangs it up in there, follows up Reader Oder Smith. I think he's got the first down. Looks awful good in there, right in there. And there you see number 65 for Fort Walton, Cameron Ross, getting him off, rolling off. Well, there's 200. a good shot of the offense right there, Wendell. Yeah, yeah. Back his TV up a little bit yeah. so you can see it. They got some big boys up in there, 305. You don't, call, you don't call people that weigh 305 pounds and 320 boys. You call them young yeah, I, men. Okay, young men. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe once, anyway. They do get a first down. First and 10, the ball sitting at the 40. The give that time, Tony Loveless, the senior running back, up the middle. He'll run into a wall of white. No gain on the play. Look like Abdul Arrington on the tackle and John Brown for the Golden Tornadoes. When I tell you, I saw a lot of people at halftime want to try and get a couple of these names in here before we got a little break. Andy Corbin, what a wonderful supporter he is for me to high school. Come down and find out tonight. His son is the drum major for the Vikings. Well, yeah, if you come back oh, to the old school once in a while and pay attention, you'd have known that. <laughs> I didn't know that. Didn't yeah. have that information. Yeah. What a wonderful job he was doing out there. And the Vikings, of course, the halftime show is always great. Counter inside, wide open. There he goes, off to the races. Arn Dixon to the 30, the 25, the 20. They won't catch him. I tell you what, lots of offense and lots of blocking up front. Jeremy Bullock, Stephen Oder. I tell you what, Wendell, that was a huge hole. Great call on the bike. Well, that's the third, third or fourth time they've run that play that successfully. Tony Lovelace has run the exact same place. A little counter trap back to the, to the uh, I guess it was the weak side. And Oren Dixon, who hasn't played in a couple of weeks because of an injury, I think he get, he's watched Tony Lovelace get 200 yards. I think that gets your ankle well in a hurry. <laughs> you know, hey, I better get well. There, a great run by Oren. Just a sprint. Now you saw the good speed Oren Dixon has. Sterling Riggs to kick. The ball down up and good. At 89, what a great number that is, too. You know, lots of Vikings have worn that number 89 proudly. I wonder the early tradition. I'm I'm almost afraid to ask who wore 89 in 1971, 73, 74. Yours truly. I tell you what, here's another one I saw. Scott Beal. What a player he was back in 1974. If you wonder why we're talking like this, this is homecoming. I saw Stephen Etheridge today. I saw him downstairs. And he was playing. Uh, he's walked on at Florida State. They redshirted him. Uh, uh, he thinks he, uh, I know he will. If, if Steve stays at Florida State, he will play. You can. You know, I predicted that Danny Warfel will win the Heights. But now everybody's going to laugh and say, well, that's hindsight. But I predict Stephen Etheridge will play at Florida State and be a star. He certainly got the town. I saw his dad downstairs, always a supporter here. So Dr. Thompson, now you're talking about a supporter. Dr. Thompson. Bruce Revan down there. Buddy O'Neill down there. Has Bruce Revan shifted towns? Nope, he's still here. <laughs> Sell insurance, great kicks. Riggs, that ball's taken at the six by King. Boy, I tell you what, there's a guy with some moves. Dances. 
Trailblazers don't have enough blocking. Uh-oh, may get a face mask out of this deal. Anthony McKinney, uh, he has to contain outside. Did a good job, but, you know, I wish they'd have the five-yard unintentional. Now, every one of them in high school is 15 yards. I've always hated that rule. That was one of those inadvertent. He put his hand there, didn't twist or anything. It's going to be 15 yards. You know, uh, in the NFL, it's either five or 15, according to how severe it is. And I'm with you. Of course, they don't want to get anybody hurt out here. That's the rules. Uh, well, you know, this is a game where you might get hurt. It's called contact. <laughs> uh, or as uh, Vince Lombardi say, said, said, as he said, said uh, dancing is a contact sport. Football is a hitting sport. i tell you what I was thinking. That halftime show was going on. I thought, man, if I had a good 12-gauge shotgun, I could have took a couple of those doves out. Those big oh, no. Doves. Oh, no. Huh? You're a real southern boy, aren't you? First and ten for the Tornadoes. I'll tell you what, he's wrapped up. Oh, not getting away. Johnny Morris. Let's see here. Was it Jamal Yates? Had him by the foot. We Pulled might, on the shoestring. We've got to hold it. But let me tell you what, Jamal Yates, he did the, he's supposed to close down on the defensive line and take on the pulling guard. Uh, and he did a great job. Took on the block and, boy, just closed up that hole. Just a great defensive play by Jamal. There's Jamal's only 5'9", 176, but he is a senior. There's that 15 we get on get back. They're going to have a holding. Let me see some of the other face. Uh, Rick Clements works down at Hodges Brothers, married to uh, Jan Clements, who works there for me. I know, and, and we could not survive without Jan Clements, I assure you. I'm, ser I'm serious. You know, there are people that make schools work. Jan Clements is one of those. First and forever. The quick look in. The ball complete that time. Number two, Tim Chapman still on his feet. Knocked out of bounds around the 48. Chased by Al Jackson, Fabian Porter. But he'll be short of the first down, Wendell. That was a great play. Yeah, and Ron Holt got a little sucked inside. Didn't keep him in, in contain there. But that was a great athletic move by number five for them. That's, uh, who is that? He's not even on here. Where is he? Number five, Elijah Horn. Was Elijah our... Horn. Where's my, where's my, oh, he plays defense too. Yeah, you know, I remember they, defense is where I've seen him. You might want to add him to that so we know where he is. Second and five, the ball, sitting up midfield, 50 yard line to give inside, to maybe good for one or two, close to the first down. I guess he got some forward progress there. They may take him up to the 47. And uh, newbie. Jam that up there in the bottom there. I'll tell you what, Johnny. he'll jam it up. John Newby wrestles, and I, I got to see that this year. Huh? I got to see it. I don't see how in the world anybody gets a grip on him. He's built so low to the ground. Strong also. Now there's some nice flipping, flip flopping. Flippy flopping. Third and inches. Motion by the Tornadoes, quick give. I believe he's got the first down window of the spot. It looks like maybe around the 44. Jamal Yates piles it up. I tell you what, that was one first down I didn't need for the Vikings to let them have. Vikings are controlled in the football game, though. Although this is a real good drive by uh, the Tornadoes. You just got to love their uniforms, though. I love it. I'll tell you my computer joke here later tonight. I've heard it. <laughs> oh, in, oh, in the mother hands. I'll tell you what, Anthony McKinney, he had it off to the race. Should have had it. Should have had it. Woo. A little quick look in there, contended for number 13 for. It was intended 14, for. 14, looks like. 14. Yes, sir. Uh, Who was that? Uh, that's uh, Shane Bergen. But uh, number five, Anthony. There's some good shots. He read it. Front. He read it. There's uh, Stephen Oder. That's Jeremy Bullock. Hey, we saw him. There's Stephen, though. He's in my seventh period class. That's another good shot. That, you know what? He got some say. good face shots. Yeah, we never used to get any good face shots. There he goes. That's some handsome good, fellas. Good kids. Young Cuban. men. Boy, he's sacked in the backfield. He shakes a couple of tacklers. Looks like, uh, I was trying to think, looked like number 84, Waylon Cotton, had him wrapped up. I know he might have laid that ball on the ground. Waylon was trying to get the football, looks like. You know, we talk about Steven Oder. You know, he started on this offensive line when they took Newby. You know, they had to find some 
Newby's playing especially defense. Newby played offense last year, but Stevens only a sophomore and uh, about 200 pounds, and he's going to be a good one. I was talking about John Newby he graduated in 1974 with Woo. with me. I tell you, and I'm telling you what, nice fella, hard working, great. But I tell you what, strong as an ox. I think you've said that always. Well, people tuned in late. <laughs> Drop back, chased on the play. Intercepted. Uh. Ron Holt still on the run. He'll take it out of bounds. Looks like about the 37, the senior. I'll tell you what, that ball was up in the air for grabs. Uh, but he did a great job of fighting for the football. And uh, if he'd have run the other way, he might have had some blocking. But a good return also to the Viking defense. Boy, if you're a defensive coach, you'd love that. The Vikings have a interception. They've had a, uh, they've, they've recovered a punt or they blocked a punt. And uh, so the defense tonight, I guess you might say, have, have done a good job of turning the ball back to the offense so they can get something done. And homecoming, I tell you what, you know, the dances are always better, you know. You know, they don't have an homecoming dance. I wish we'd have one. There'd be some people dancing. The Vikings, tall sweep that time. Dixon to the 40, shows the speed out to the 50. Good for a first down. Uh, good blocking out there by Lovelace and uh, Corey Scott. They did a good job coming off the football and blocking in the corner. But you know what? It looks like to me that uh, that Watkins High Tornadoes are starting to grab the knees here. They look a little tired, you know. I met with uh, the principal, Mr. Walton, there at the halftime, and he made the same observation. What's that? They're tired? That, that the uh, Vikings would prevail in the third and fourth quarter because of conditioning. Um, they've, been, they've shown that they've been in pretty good shape. There's a toss, a spin, a turn. Tony Loveless at the 20, the 15, the 10. They're going to try and chase him down. He's in for the touchdown. Yeah, he's good. Good job, Tony. Broke a tackle at the line of scrimmage there. And Tony's going to have another 200-yard rushing well, you know, Tony, Easy. good job. Good blocking there at the point of attack. I think attack. I think he ran out over behind Oder and Bullock, but I'm not sure. I don't want to. But you can just give the whole offensive line. Well, they flip flop these guys. What's like, the most points scored by a Viking team? Uh, well, I remember the year Danny Warfel was here, and it was 60 to nothing on Bay, and uh, it could have been 100 to nothing. That was when Danny was here in '92. Was that '92 era? I'll tell you what, Riggs is getting a leg workout tonight. Yeah, I think it's 1992 or 91. Anyway, 60 to nothing with Bay. Bay uh, High School, 60 to I nothing. I think, well, the first, I watched the first half of that. Danny Warfel was like uh, 1991. Uh, how can we forget they were state champions that year? I think Danny Warfel was 12 for 12 for five touchdowns, about 200 yards the first half or something like that. We got the light show going next door. Shorten out the microphone. <laughs> we got some younger, younger people, young folks, young folks next door in the little booth. I don't know how they got up in the press box, but they, they had the strobe light show working for the touchdown. About <laughs> to short out the microphones. I was wondering what was that. <laughs> Well, now you know. We've got some Viking fans next year, real small Viking fans. I tell you what, there's a bunch of them out here tonight. It's homecoming here in the Vikings on top, 38 to 14. 626 left here in the third period. And Wendell, I bet there's some more offense left here. Mr. Riggs to kick off. They're kicking a little short this time. King still on his feet. He likes going to the right, doesn't he? And, buddy, he gets hit by the same people every time right up in there. Tony McLean looks like Rose, Cornelius Rose. And number 45. What's 69 good? up in there, Jamie Armstrong. Right. Tony McLean going to be player of the week. Last week, Tony Lovelace was the offensive player of the week for Fort Walton. There's just his. There's the big boys up front. Who was that? Looked like Scott Smith there. Just a There's mere even odor. Next, uh, just a uh, mere 6'3", 320 pounds. 
Why, I want to, you know, they have to have two, the parents have to have two jobs to feed these guys. I'm telling you, first and 10, the Tornadoes, they'll keep it on the ground, stick it up front. Cornelius Rose on the tackle. Looks like Johnny Morris there. John Townsend. Shoof Malden. You know, now you talk about all the kids that, uh, you know, come out all and play and they're, they're the, they run the, they're the cannon fodder for the first and second team. They're looking up at that score, and it's the third quarter. It's 38-14, <laughs> and their heart's starting to move a little bit, and they're getting a little bit excited because they know that tonight they gonna, is tonight. They're going to get to play. i tell you what, the Vikings, how many people do they have dressed out over here? Well, they had 95 over on the other side. Uh, how many of the Vikings had? Uh, we got about 35, 36 maybe. I don't know. That's not a very big squad. Well, we got a good JV. JV's only lost one game. He lost a heartbreaker the other day to Niceville, but they've won three games and lost one. They've been doing real well. The Vikings have some people coming back. Drew Roberts going to come back. He's a, he's a, just a, a junior, and uh, he's already showed good leadership and throw the football real good. And uh, you know, Thaddeus Rose will be back next year. Uh, John Townsend will be back. Troy McLean will be back. Uh, you know, they're gonna they're gonna have some people to come back and on which they can build somebody around. And uh, and we'll be back. I guess we'll be back. We hope we'll be back. <laughs> I just wish it would get fall here. It's like a spring game. It's so hot. Second and eight for the Golden Tornadoes. The ball on the 27. Scott drops the pass. It throws a rifle shot complete over the left side. Tim Chapman on the reception. Thaddeus Rose on the coverage for the Vikings. Well, that's about a, that's a little little turn in, little hook play. Some people call it a hook, a turn in, a wipe. Good throw, though. J.J. Scott, he's only 45 of 104 for 721 yards and five TDs. And that isn't bad. And only. a junior. He's only a junior, but he's got a good arm. And lots of poise. I tell you what, I've been impressed by his play tonight. Yeah, Coach Duke's real excited about prospects for next year, all of this year even, but for next year especially. Well, they break the first line of coverage there. That's something that happens on a third and short. They send some people in the gaps. Al Jackson drags him down. Al had him around the ankle. They haven't called out. Of course, it's good that you don't call the defensive backs too much, you know. <laughs> you know you First get, and ten. And I'll tell you what, the one, the one I was thinking about, you know, I was, I was thinking, man, I sure am hungry. And when you're hungry, what do you think about? Well, I go down to my friends, the Vervoots down there at Bellissimo's Pasta and Pizza next to Eglin Parkway. Next to Kmart on Eglin Parkway. Excuse me. Scott throwing. Oh, he takes the bite on the first pass. Yep. The reception that time, Tim Chapman once again, Thaddeus Rose, he bit on the out. The you're ball complete. You, you're absolutely right. That's the old the out and up or the stop and go or whatever, and a good pump fake by the quarterback laid it out perfectly for him. But, uh, boy, number four for Fort Walton beats uh, Thaddeus Rose got turned around. You can't do that. you got to keep him in front of you. Did a good job of saving the touchdown, i tell you uh, what. They got the bow up right up. But you hate to see that as a defensive back because you got to keep everything in front of you. Of course, he's in man coverage out there, and so that's he's got a tough job there. The Vikings with a tester here. First and 10 from the 20. The give that time up front. Jamie Armstrong, Newby, Waylon Cotton, John Townsend, all of them to help. Well, I'm going to watch, and Newby might get up by the bottom of that. Is that Newby? Yep, there he is. He gets up. I tell you what, he is so built so low to the ground that it's really tough to get it, you know, to get into his knees. If you're a blocker, you want to get up under his pads. I don't think you can get under his pads. Daniel King at the tailback. Number 21, Mario Rogers at like, the fullback. They like to throw the fade from this position here. Scott looked like he's trying to call some alternates. Well, they're going to. Quarterback keeper turns it up inside. Some Still good. on his feet. He'll drag it down maybe to the two, Wendell. Thaddeus Rose on the tackle for the Vikings. Well, a lot of poor tackling out there by Fort Wall. You know that when you're a defensive coach, even though you're, you know, the game is. Well, you know, the game isn't over. We got a whole quarter, but you hate to see poor tackling. And uh, when they, we get right down to playing football, you block and tackle. I mean, everybody says, oh, yeah, I know that. But really, if you don't block and you don't tackle, you don't play football. And on defense, you tackle people, and you're going to be successful. And, you, and the co defensive coaches hate to see 
defensive players miss tackles, and the full wall did not wrap up well there. The Vikings with a challenge, first and goal from the three. The ball, the floater in the end zone, incomplete, intended for number six that time, Larry Pacific. He was specifically, he threw it specifically to him, right? Specifically. <laughs> You know, the, they like to throw that pattern out. I called a fade last time, which I thought you throw the fade when you're about 10 yards out, you have more room to, you know, to run into the end zone. I thought they had thrown it last time, but they made a better call than I would have because they, they got it down in there close to score. I'd run it in. We'll see what they do. Third and goal. I, I figured they're going to run, goal, I'm they're gonna run the quick slant. You sure are. Ooh, he wraps him up. They ran right there in Newby. Looks like Cornelius Rose is there also. I see it looked like Arrington carrying the ball. No, no, uh, Morris. No, look at there. Troy McLean again. You know, Troy's had himself a heck of a ball game tonight. Troy McLean, 6'1", 190 pounds. He's another one of those juniors. Now, this is one of those things where you have to watch everything. Ernst at the tailback. The, the give to Rogers. Off the right side. I tell you what, I don't see any hands going up except for, oh, there we go. Uh, Touchdown, Tornadoes. Well, the uh, number two for the uh, Tornadoes we already had it. Tim Chapman had his. He was refereeing. Don Bufundo is the white hat tonight, and I could not recognize. I saw Gussie Bush. Gu Gussie Duncan, Gussie Bush. <laughs> That's the person who owns the Bush Brewery Company. But uh, Gussie Duncan, who's the timekeeper, but Don Bufundo. There Ratcliffe to kick, up, down, good. Is the uh, referee tonight, Bill Franklin, the umpire, the linesman, Kitty Frame, line judge, Jim Humberger. Back judge, judge Rick Slifka, and of course, the clock operator, Gussie Duncan. And Gussie's still here. Looks the same. It looks exactly the same. 251 left here in the third period. Homecoming here at Joe Edward Stadium. The Vikings on top, 38 to 21. When are you right? This was not over with yet. Lots of time left. Well, you know what? This type of game here. We've seen some strange things happen, haven't we? Uh, the Vikings, though, have been controlling the line of scrimmage here recently. And, uh, you know, the thing about having a good running game, you have your big linemen, which we've focused on tonight. They start leaning on you, and pretty soon around the fourth quarter, the defense starts getting a little tired. And, uh, you know, and you saw when uh, Oran Dixon broke at his long run that uh, they did not react as quickly as they did at the beginning of the game. Ratcliffe to kick deep to Oran Dixon and Lovelace. Lovelace, they'll take it at the two. That's Oran Dixon right there. Oh, I'm sorry, Dixon. He'll take it to the 22. I tell you what, some help from Tony Loveless. He'll get up in there and stick him on him. Yeah, he made a good block again. Like I said, I don't think Tony will ever take his offensive line out for dinner because that might break him. <laughs> but uh, the fact is, is that uh, Tony runs hard and the line blocks real well. They, you know, I was asking Coach about, you know, they everybody knows that there's a, been a big, Fort Walton had a real tough thing to overcome this summer. and and. I'm not going to mention what happened because everybody knows, but uh, I was talking to Coach Rankin. He said, you know what? These kids said, look, we can win ourselves. And it sort of brought them together a little bit, and they've played that way. they played real well together. First and 10, the toss sweep. This time to Dixon, looking for some running room. He'll take up two, bring up a second and eight from the 24. And that was a bad choice for Ron. He should have gone on outside. They were blocking the sweep, and he's he planted. He's got good speed. He could have turned the corner there. And uh, one thing they're doing right now when they run these sweeps, they're causing that defense to really have to stretch out and run a little bit. You know, get it's a hot night. And uh, that time around, he just did not, uh, I don't think he ran the play properly. <laughs> when you run a sweep, run it. <laughs> the ball sitting at the 22. Second and 10 for the Vikings. 2.04 left in the third period. The Vikings on top, 38-21. But I tell you what, there's Dixon. Throws a stiff arm down, and the guy grabbed his arm, wrestled him down, but not before he picks up almost 20, Wendell. It'll bring it to the 39, first and 10, Viking. That's that same counter they've been so successful on. You know, you saw number 75 with uh, Jeremy Bullock downfield, and he did a real good thing there. He was out there front, but had he a blocked, 
it would have been a clip, and he passed it up. But you know what? And sometimes the best thing you can do when you're about to block is don't block. And uh, he didn't throw the block, and the guy, the number 13, Dak Schroeder, made the tackle, but that's okay. We had a big gain here. You can see the Viking fans on their feet here at Joe Etheridge Stadium, smelling some more blood. 133 left in the third period. The give, Loveless, off the right side, still on his feet, dancing, twirls, dips, and gets dragged down. I tell you what, what a great job of running. He's passed midfield into tornado territory. Dak Schroeder on the tackle for the tornadoes. You can see what I what I mean right now. The, the Vikings are just really getting off the ball and they're really getting the getting into the uh, up under the pads of the uh, Watkins High defensive line, and the backs are still running hard. And uh, you know it's just getting tough for them to stop the Vikings now. They'll stick the ball at midfield. First and ten for the Vikings. 108 left in the th in the third period. Drew Roberts, the junior quarterback, to call the signals. Tall sweep, Dixon. Lots of blocking out front, turns the speed on, chased out of bound for a late hit there, Wendell. Yep. I'll tell you what, Elijah Horn. Yep, that was a late hit. That's just a, you know, that's a mistake of enthusiasm. I don't think he was trying to do anything that, that's just, uh, that happens sometime. They're gonna call it. Let me tell you what I just saw though. The number five for Elijah Horn, of course he had the late hit. But he was trying, he stood up there in the middle, and he was trying to blow the gap. Now, he's very quick and built low to the ground. Darren Reeder caught him and blocked him way off the line of scrimmage. And really, and, and the coaches were very concerned about uh, Horn's ability to get through the gap. Reeder cut him off. Good job <laughs> by the, Darren Reeder. The referee's trying to mark it off, and <laughs> the tornadoes won't get out of the way. <laughs> now, there's a new technique. We, they, we just the middle set up a wall right here. Looked like the Osmos pressure treated wall there, didn't it? Nick will let us keep it. <laughs> you probably don't remember those commercials, Wendell. Uh, <clears throat> well, I'm playing football. I mean, I'm watching a football game. First and 10 from the 34 to Vikings on a long drive here. Dixon, lots of running room to the 30, the 25, the 20. Got one person to beat. He'll knock him down at the seven. First and goal for the Vikings. Dax Yoder there on the tackle for the Tornadoes. But let me tell you something, another great block by Jeremy Bullock. Now they pulled Jeremy Bullock out around the end and he's supposed to cut the first person that shows out there. He walled off that side there and Oren Dixon ran in behind that block, but a great block by Jeremy Bullock pulling outside here to get a, there to make these linemen players of the week. I didn't see many linemen make players of the week. Here's some players of the week. That looks like a couple of Emmets. Emmett and Emmett Jr. Yeah. Emmett number two. Is Jeremy really 305? Yeah. Boy, on his feet, loveless. He'll stick it up inside right there behind Odor, Bullock, and Reeder. Now, is Jeremy Bullock 305 window? You see him walking around the halls. It looks like it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, they really are, huh? I best that, you know, the best time to check if they're 305 is going to the cafeteria at lunch. You think? And then you, you can check it out. they got one, two, or three plates. Okay. At the end of the third period, the Vikings 38, the Watkins Tornadoes 21, and the Vikings smelling the pay dirt. We'll be right back with some fourth quarter action in a moment. Business owners, football season is here, and you know, every year Channel 6 replays the local football games. Many of your customers watch, record, and rewatch these games. To buy an ad on this highly effective medium, call Christine Pinson's 314-8110. Hi, this is Tyranny Barnes, Fort Walton Beach High School, class of 2001. Go Vikings! Show your team support on Student Spotlight. Call 314-8110 or pick up the form at Emerald Coast Cable. The rates are really affordable. Go Vikings! Have you ever bought anything that the next day you wished you hadn't? At Bulldog Motors in Crestview, that won't happen. Hi, I'm Tom Ward with Bulldog Motors. We not only strive to provide you a clean, quality, late model cars, trucks, and vans, but we give you a two-day, no-hassle, money-back guarantee on every vehicle we sell. So come to Crestview's newest late model car center, Bulldog Motors, where we take a bite out of high prices. We don't want to be the biggest, we just want to be the best. Call us today at 682-8788. We stay open late. Bulldog Motors. 
Want a few good reasons to bank at First National Bank of Crestview? How about custom checking accounts tailored to just your needs? Checking accounts for people that write lots of checks, very few checks, or want to draw interest on their accounts. Whatever you need, First National Bank of Crestview has it. Add to the conveniences such as two locations, the most drive through windows in town, 24-hour automatic tellers, and you start to see why it just makes sense to bank with your hometown bank. That's First National Bank of Crestview, your hometown bank. Fourth quarter action. Now there's some Viking fans. Let's see if we can stick it in here, Wendell. Lovelace. I'll tell you what, he's dragging a few folks. Gonna be a little short. Gonna bring up a third and goal here this time for the Vikings. It's like number 52 for, nah. We couldn't get him? No. Traveris, oh man, Comagees. <laughs> That's the first time we've called his name tonight. He had him by the ankle there on the bottom. He sure did. Third and goal from the four. That's what do you it. call, Wendell? Let's see. Here we go. Here we let, let's let's what prioritize. I call? You. I call a fade because I want Corey Scott to have all the touchdowns he can go. I, a quick slant. Corey Scott. Quick slant. Scott's out here one on one. Running right up to the back of the end zone and run a square in real quick. No. Roberts, tall sweep, Dixon, lots of room out there. Good block on the corner. Stick your head in there. Touchdown, Vikings. I think I'll run a sweep. <laughs> <laughs> There we go, homecoming, 44 to 21. Wendell, I'm telling you, we're knocking on the door with the most scored points in the history of Fulham Beach High School. No, we just said that 91, 60 to nothing at Bay. We're knocking on the door. That's a big door there. Uh, well, we're 16 we 16 points away. Yeah. We can do it. I believe it. I believe it. You got to believe. Well, he's got to put... You know what? I, I should have called a sweep then. You know that? should have. Uh, Al Jackson to hold. Sterling to kick. Mr. Riggs kicks it up, down. I believe he's perfect for the night. He is. There's the homecoming. I'll tell you what, you love to win it. Wendell, here's the next trivia question. What teacher has been at Fort Beach High School for the longest amount of time? The longest amount of time. What teacher? Now, let's see. I don't I know who tied. I don't know if there's another one, but I can tell you who tied. Well, we've had some retire, like Miss Prevet. That don't count. That still don't count. still there. She just retired this year, didn't she? She Maybe. sure did, about a week ago. Yeah. She was uh, there when I went to school. Oh, she, oh, she's not going to like you for saying that, for sure. She is a wonderful woman. Yes, she is. All right. Now, who, who what teacher has been there the longest? I'm thinking. Mm, I don't know. You know what? I really don't. Ernest Hepson would have to be the one. You know what? You're absolutely right because he was there when I came to this county back in 1973. <laughs> he was the he was the very first and only band director from Fort Beach High School. <laughs> Riggs to kick off the ball, taking it to 15. That time by number four King. Wrap him up, guys. Boy, wrap he's still up. running. They gotta wrap him up. That <laughs> ball's loose out there, too. Somebody's pulling the bull, I mean, the ball out, the bull yeah. out, the bull ball, bull ball for horns. McKinney. Well, McKinney made a good, did a good job. But let me tell you something about football. you got an outside guy that his job is not to let anybody get the sideline, and he did exactly what he's supposed to. He kept his outside shoulder free, made the back, turned back to the inside so the pursuit could get him. So he made a good fundamental defensive play on kickoff team there. Hepson was also the most handsome. He is the Dick Clark of four on me Oh no. Now you're gonna you're gonna really get he I want him to be able to speak to him next week. The Dick Clark of four on me I'm telling you what, he looks like he's about twenty-three years old. Yeah. I know he's hundred and twenty-three, there's no question is. Well I tell you. He is a wonderful man. I was in the very first band at Fort Walton Beach High School, Wendell. What did I do? Play cones and the and kazoo? The very first. Our uniform was a pair of blue pants, a white uh, T-shirt, and red windbreakers. That was the first official uniform for Fort Walton Beach High School. Boy, that must, that must have taken a lot of car washes for those uniforms. <laughs> it was weak, 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 man. First, oh, second and seven. He goes deep. Coverage on the play there out there. Looked like number 15, Ron Holtz, got him covered and wrapped up. Good play on defense. Yeah, that time he did a great job. He didn't, you know, they just a straight, nothing fancy fly pattern. And, uh, you know, like I say, J.J. Scott, the junior quarterback, 5'11 junior quarterback for uh, 
Watkins High, he's got a good arm, boy. You know, he's very impressive. Very impressive. I got a chance to, now here's the history story. Look at there, down there going upstairs. Hey, there. we got a shot of us. The, let's catch this play, Wendell. Now, did, here's the story of the very first football game ever played by Fulham Beach High School. I was there. Here we go, third and seven. Blitz on the play. They pick up the blitz. Scott on the corner looking for somebody to throw. He'll get knocked down short of the first down. It'll bring up a fourth and one at the 40. Now, here's my story. Now, wait a minute. Let's spot who made this play first. They're going to get him out of bounds. Oh, 45 made the play. Troy McLean, Ron Holt over there pulling nah, him out. Jamal Yates ran him out now. He okay. Sure did. Okay, tell your story. Here's my story. Fourth down in the foot. The very first football game for me to high school play was played in Meg Stadium. I don't know if you had that information. And the band, you know, we didn't start, but about four weeks before school started. So, you know, we got out there and got the band, and we were real good marching over at Choctahatchee. We went double session over here at Choctahatchee. We was real good over there where the lines were all painted out. Here we go, fourth. They got the first down. But the very first game, it rained a little bit that afternoon. And so the very first game, when we got out there to march, there was not one line on the whole field. Well, the band thought we were supposed to go up to the 20 and turn around back. We didn't know you were supposed to count steps. Buddy, it was a Chinese fire drill like you have never seen. Mm -hmm. It was the worst band experience in a lifetime. And after the ball game was over, we thought we were supposed to go home. Mr. Hebson took us back out on the field, and for another two hours, we marched till midnight. Oh, you got to count the steps. We learned to count. Uh -huh. there's, there's the Viking first football game story. Oh, in and out of hands. Intercepted that time. Yeah, number five, Anthony McKinney. But what a great play oh, there. He dropped it. Oh, he did? He dropped oh, it. Oh, my goodness. He dropped it. He just got it. You know, I think he wanted to run, but you know why? That was just a great play all around. McKinney. And also, I guess on coverage there was number three, uh, Fabian Porter. But they had that little <laughs> quick slant, didn't they? And that's just good good reaction to the football. You know, you just, a defensive coach, defensive backfield coach, you just love to see him run to the football. And guess who coaches the defensive back? Who's that? Russell Steele. I knew that. Coach Steele, defensive back, did a good job there. Ran to the football. Is Real. it steel, S-T-E-A-L? Is that how you pronounce it? That's how you spell his last name? Oh, he's going to get you for that one. That's how you still. Oh, there he is, 33. John Peters on the on the red dog blitz, whatever you want to call it. Boy, he just. Boy, I love to see that. Boy, the Vikings can pair, pin their ears back now, and they're coming hard. It's going to bring up. Looks like maybe a long, long uh, 16. The ball's going to sit at the 37. Let's get back to the football, huh? Mm. You need any more stories, old time stories? I'm the man. Yeah. <laughs> I came here in 73 when Bruner had their first two football teams. I coached for Orange. Coach Bobby Marshall, who uh, sadly, you know, passed away this, a couple months ago. Scott, third and seven, drops the pass, looks downfield, throws it long. Got a receiver out there. Oh, in and out of the hands, Tim Chapman. I tell you uh, what, he just dropped it. But you know what, a great throw. That, once again, boy, you know what, come out here and have Sky watch high school football because that was a great throw. Number two, nothing fancy. Tim Chapman. Tim Chapman, great fly pad and ran right by number three for Fort Walton, Fabian Porter, and J.J. Scott threw a perfect ball to him. He just couldn't come up with it. He's over on the sidelines. Oh, Tim, boy, he's feeling rough. Those coaches are over picking him up. Uh, There's a good shot at the cheerleaders. Uh, I like those cameramen. Get those cheerleaders on every chance you get. There's, there's Anna Camilla, our halftime guest Ratcliffe stands back to punt gets a hanger this time it might hit a play it, I was fixing to say I wanted our players to get out of the way of that one I'll all the roll dead at the 32 first and 10 for the Vikings at the 32 7 58 left in the fourth period the Vikings on top 45 to 21 and we're gonna have to start really spotting because we're gonna start getting some uh, new player new players out there Although the first string is still in there, I no Mark Kubiak. Well, I, I saw Daniel there. Reed check in there. Yeah. Of course, some of these players have been in earlier tonight too, but uh, we'll get some new names in there. And the field is nice grass, so they don't look too dirty. Although uh, Tardy Lovely, look at him now. He he got he dirty. He got ragged, he, dark. You can see he's sweating, and they're gonna get a ball to him again. Look at him. They're gonna let him run. 
Lovelace off the right side, right up in around Smith and Ross. I tell you what, I'm that good play, but what I'm really pleased with, and I'm sure Coach Rankin are, is that we're holding them to the football. You know, I mean, you got to, one thing on offense, and when you run the football as many times and you got to run it to, to win, is uh, no turnovers, no turning the football over, and uh, the night the Vikings have not ex had a fumble, and that's a good, real positive thing. Of course, the game not over yet, but they have not fumbled, and that's good. Ian Khalil here to the near side, the timeout there for the Vikings. Number 30 for the Vikings, uh, Kevin Curl. They have him listed as a tight end, but he's at fullback tonight. We're going to let him do some playing. Number 85, Ian Khalil, you said his name. Now, I'll tell you what, too. I hope we get that right. <laughs> I guess I was in eighth grade. You know, eighth graders are not, pro, uh, you know, because all we had was eighth, ninth, and tenth graders when we first started for Beach High School. An eighth grader, I guess I played in the band. And, you know, eighth grade, you're not the smartest guy in the world. But our, I was telling you, our, our uniforms for the band were a windbreaker, a T-shirt, and a pair of light, thin, cotton blue slacks. Well, we went up to Elba, Alabama to play a football game. And that's all I had was a red windbreaker. You know what the temperature that night in Elba, Alabama was? Uh, I imagine it was cold. 16 degrees. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I'm up there in a windbreaker. Well, were you cold? Yeah, I was the coldest I've ever been in my lifetime that night. Matter of fact, it was so cold, the band, we went up there and we marched at halftime, and when, after we finished marching, we came home. You know, it looks like if you put your instrument up to your lips, it would have frozen there, you know? It was as cold as I've ever been in my life. Second and six for the Vikings. Roberts drops the pass. Pressure from behind. The ball Whoa. looked like fumbled. Uh, he still got it. Good play that time. I tell you what, Whoa. Sherman Carl, the senior, 230, six foot four, wrapped him up, hit him hard. He's lucky not to get hurt on nah, that. That was Jabari Musgrove, wasn't it? 5'10, 165, nah. was it? No, trust the spotter. Okay. I got the, I got the you know, your okay. son in here. Got the young Wendell eyes. I tell you what, when old Aaron comes in, it's, a, it, it's like a whole different ball game. <laughs> We got other people here. Number 50 at center now is uh, Darren Reader. Well, no, Darren Reader's still in there. <laughs> I thought it looked, his jersey looks clean. We're going to give it. That time, love us. What a move. I tell you what, now there's a move. Now, he's having a good two weeks here. He's up close to 200 again, 200 yards. And it's just done an outstanding job. Boy, it's really good. He gets going downhill. You know, they have this thing, you know, you get your shoulders squared away, he gets going downhill. Tony Lovelace turns his shoulders square, gets going downhill quickly. Is there a downhill? Well, it, what it means, you're running hard, your chances are making, uh, uh, taking people on, and uh, that's what you want to do if you're running the ball. You want to run downhill quickly. We're going to punt it up here. A little end over it. I bet this one works out good. You can tell when it's got it working. Roll out of bound there to 28, 556. Now we're going to have a hard time getting to 60 points if we don't score quick here. <clears throat> well, I'll make the prediction right. You don't think we're going to get there? They got to throw the ball, an interception right here, and I'm right back in it. Well, I'd like to see some of the kids that don't get to play much be spotted in there. Of course, you know, we don't have much more than 35 people out there, so 22 of them basically play. Uh, and uh, so. Uh, the extra people get, get a chance to get out there. We'll have to see if they've been spotted up there. But I just really, I believe we'll see this Scott boy throw the ball, you think? I believe he'll, we'll see it. They, they like to throw the, they run the fly pattern out of this pattern and uh, I mean out of this formation. Scott, there it is. Drop, lots of room. There's the fly pattern again. He's got him out there open. Up, uh, good coverage. There's a flag. Well, I call the flag. Thaddeus Rose was beaten pretty <laughs> by step. He's well, right he's, with him, Larry, Larry Pacific. Yeah, but he pushed him. He pushed him. But you know, it cut, in high school football, it comes out and it's only a penalty. You don't know, penalize you at the spot of the foul, or do they? No. Oh well, what, the Vikings are down here where the flag is. They must be playing pro football or something. They are. Uh -huh. We're gonna take it back here and mark it off. Now, did I call that play or what? Did, I, did no, you I see did. that? There, see, I could coach defensive backs. You won for 12. I was listening to Coach Steele the other day talk about what they run. And uh, 5.48 left here in the fourth period. The Vikings on I top, 45-21, a timeout. I want you to notice I do my homework before I come to these games. I would say. 
you know. There's a good shot of Coach Ken Reed. Paul Landry out there. Coach Landry came over from Live Oak. There's Coach Guidry, my neighbor. There's Coach Rankin. You know, coach, you know, head coaches never smile. They don't want they don't want anybody to know. They want everybody to know this is serious business. And you see Coach Rankin, he doesn't have a smile on his face yet. He's talking to Coach Steele there. All right, look at get a shot of Coach Rankin there. Come on, guy. There he is. And look at him. You, you know, he's serious. He got he's three touchdowns ahead and he ain't smiling. Well, he took the Star Wars hat off. So he's well, not flying either. Well, you can do that when you're three touchdowns up or more. And what a great guy, too. I tell you what. There's Coach Steele. Don't pick your nose, Coach Steele. Just uh, there's Coach Glenn Mayer. Now he's a defensive coordinator. Coach Mayer, uh, just his first year defensive coordinator. I think his de defense has done really well and very accessible. I enjoy talking to him. Well, let's see what's going to happen here. 458, the ball, first and 10. It's sitting at the 42 yard line. Scott drops the pass, looks deep, throws it across the middle to the speedster. What a catch. Boy. Tim Chapman, now he dropped one for a touchdown a little while ago, Wendell. He sure made up for it there. Well, that was the harder catch. The other one was easier. But you know what? You've got a defender there. Uh, <laughs> what can you do about it? The, you defended the pass. It's well thrown. The guy makes a great catch. You just go down here and, okay, we got to bow up. You know, you can't, you can't fault uh, the coverage there. It was done good, a good job. But, boy, he's impressive. i tell you what, he could throw it. I mean, I... He's got some yardage in that, too. <laughs> and he's only a junior. Boy, he needs to be up around 6'3", and somebody ought to come see him. First and 10, the Tornadoes. They're taking is... on the corner. Lots of running room. We'll see if he'll turn it up. Boy, I mean, he just left. Uh, he left McLean and uh, uh, Jamal Yates and John Townsend. Left them all in a, boy, they... Good movement, that good escapability. Well, they, they, they were trying to kill him. <laughs> oh, Jamie Armstrong, uh, I don't see how he escaped that. We're a great job there. Now here's an old face. Scott Beal, class of 74. Did they name Beal Parkway after him? I think so. Now that's really old. We got all these Vikings over here. We're gonna see if we can't get him on the headset here in a second. Uh -oh. There we go. I think break that, into play. Well, I think we might have been offside. Scott, Let's we've see. been telling old memorable stories about high school football. There's going to be a penalty on Margo. What was your most memorable experience at Fort Walton Beach High School? Well, I think it's probably when we uh, took on Tate High School and I think we won the district championship at that time. I remember that. We were, uh, you played with Ron Enflade in them, right? Yeah. And I remember that game. He I played all there. around me. I was supposed to block for him. But oh, okay. <laughs> That's, uh, you didn't have to do too much blocking with him. Bobby Michael, Ron Enclade, uh, yeah. Dane McDaniel was a quarterback. Uh, That's right. Uh, Cliff Lewis. Cliff Lewis. And that was uh, a, you know, that was a good, uh, uh, the Cirillos. Frank Cirillo. Yeah, I remember that. Mike Ramotka. Yep. That's a good football team. That was a good football team. I tell you though. Okay, there's an outside handoff to number 20 for. Man, you stunned me. That's <laughs> Brian Ernest. Good play. A little counter back to the outside. The good, good pursuit there by the Fort Wall, especially Troy McLean. But anyway, what year? That was boy. I, I'm older than you are, isn't that something? That's right. Because I was coaching at Bruner when that team was here. Is that right? Yeah, when y'all played. I used to watch y'all. In fact, we used to go over there and scrimmage at JV to Bruner. Uh, I tell you what, I look at these boys now, and they are monsters. Oh, aren't they? Yeah. Aren't they? They're really big. Be second. Uh, well, be first and goal. There you see J.J. Scott at quarterback. He'll give the ball to inside. No, he's a fake. He's going to pitch it to the outside at number 20, Ryan Ernest, and he'll go in for the score. That's a great play there by J.J. Scott. He showed he could run the option, too, couldn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that was a great play that time. In for the touchdown, a late pitch. Scott, let me ask one other question before we get out of here, and we appreciate you stepping up in the booth and visiting with us, all the old alumni and coming out to the ball game. I think you hit on it once again. I think you and I were probably the two biggest players on our team. I was 195 pounds. You were about 185, 195 pounds. <laughs> and now you look up there. Let me show you this front line up there, 284, 290, 305. 
We couldn't have got three players in there. Three, five. And I tell you, 284, John Newby, I was telling stories about his dad playing with us. What else can you think is the difference of when we used to play and, and, and the players you see today? Actually, I think they've got more depth than we had back then. Uh, just like they may have a little more team spirit than we had back then. Uh, I don't know. I remember y'all had pretty good spirit against Choctaw, man. They used to be, they used to sell this place out for Choctaw, remember? That well, you can't help but get spirit for that game, I tell you. <laughs> But it seems like a little bit of the luster has come off that ball game, you know. Like it, it's not like it used to be. There's Coach Rankin. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, you played the, the line then. You weighed 190 pounds. No, I weighed about 180. I was putting five pounds on me. Uh, who was your coach now? There's what? Scott back. Let's get this play right now. He throws the fade on the outside, and he overthrows ball intended for number six, Larry Pacific, and he was wide open on the fade. Who was your coach? Dave, some of your coaches, coach. coach Coach Chester Norris. Chester was Norris and uh, Phil Brogdon. Oh, he Dale had the defense. Holmes. Dale Holmes. Um, Phil Brogdon still the principal there at, uh, or he's the principal at Shalimar. And Dale Holmes works at Votech still. Bobby Marshall. Bobby Marshall. Yeah. I still talk to I talked to uh, Phil Brogdon here and there. He he come watch my first kickboxing boxing show. Well, you know what? I, uh, <laughs> I don't. I never seen a guy. That, Phil Brogdon is one of the funniest guys, the most enthusiastic guys when he coached defense. There you see the, the gold, the number of Scott rolling out to the outside. It's not radio, and they ought to throw the flag here because he grounded that ball. He was in the grasp of Cornelius Rose and John Peters. Well, I tell you, Phil Brogdon, he was a motivator. Like he, you know, I, I learned a lot from him as far as motivation training. Training young boxers and kickboxers. I took that from my high school days now. And uh, and I remember your games with Leon. They used to be <laughs> big. Leon used to be so tough back then. Leon and Godby, they were big powerhouses back then. You betcha. I remember that. Scots on the way. No. <laughs> no little Scots on the way. No little Scots on the way. All right. Any little Allens on the way? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got, I'd like for a lot more Vikings to show up at our homecoming. A lot more. Yeah. Well, Scott, we certainly appreciate you stepping up. Oh, there's a trip fall down. Oh, That's wow. it. Oh, John Townsend came on a stunt. What a great What play. a great spot. It's a good play there. We are sort of, who's this? Y'all doing a fine job. Hey, hey how you doing? We got lots of, lots of, of course, it's homecoming now, here. I, I, want you to, I want you to notice something. I will not tell anybody, though. And me and Alan got our red on. And who comes up here? Look what he's wearing on homecoming night. I'm not going to say what color that is. <laughs> you know what? That Scott Bill always beat to a different drum. <laughs> he couldn't understand why he was throwing ice at him. <laughs> he, he, a green he, he can't understand why he was getting mugged on the way up here. Yeah. I'll tell you what, he was a tremendous athlete, and he was a hard worker, one of the best players we had on our team. Yeah. Scott Bill from Fulham Beach High School, class of 1974. Phil Brogdon, of course, is the principal at Shalimar Elementary School. Phil, I worked with Phil when he was a principal at Bruner Junior High when I was coaching there, when it was the junior high, and he was a crack up. A good administrator, too. I tell you what, the kids minded, I guarantee you. you know, I remember him talking about this doomsday defense they had there, and one night, God be beat us. Fort Walton. I mean, beat them bad. And he called them Doomsday. And then the, when they came back at practice, he said, well, I'm just going to call you guys Day today. No <laughs> no Doom, just Day. And I cracked up. That's an old Phil Brogdon joke there. <laughs> Fourth and forever here. Long, long. They got to go to the seven-yard line. He'll throw it in the end zone. And that's six if he'll turn around. What, a, an incomplete? I don't think he Oh, he dropped it. it. He dropped it. Oh, they, uh, they you know missed what? it. The they, guy, he was, he, like you said, he was shielded. He didn't see it. And he did not catch that football, but it's a great catch. You don't have instant replay. Number two, again. He bounced on Tim that. Chapman, that's the second great catch he's made. I tell you, that was a one that was a drop. That was a catch. He bounced on the ball. And now, Coach Steele is having a fit because you don't like to see this. You know, you don't let, you like to still play well, even though they're way ahead. But, uh, you know, you almost wonder why. Uh, the Golden Tornadoes didn't air it out at first because they have this Scott kid is good. He's a good player. 
Well, he, the, you know, the back judge, he did the right thing. He looked over to the line, Judge, to see if he was going to make the well, call. Both, were, well, both of them were out of position because they, he dropped the football. They were both looking at each other. Who's going to make it chase from behind? Incomplete that ball. Boy, John Peters just really lowered Ooh. the broom on Scott, boy. Good job. Intended down for Mario Rogers in the middle. Incomplete. 244. There you are. There's the story. The Vikings homecoming on top, 45 to 27. Allen Wenzel, Wendell Brock, and Aaron Brock here in the booth with Rick McNulty switching down in the truck. Thank you. Well, we got all kind of Vikings around here. Well, I don't think we're going to make the late news tonight with all these. <laughs> You know, sometimes these games, when they run the football a lot, you get out pretty quick. But uh, I think that we're going to have a lengthy telecast here. You know, and uh, think about it, Alan. You know, these games are brought to us, and we don't mention this enough. It's a public service by Emerald Coast Cable TV, and they're, they're, uh, they are a public service. And we really appreciate y'all's support out there, as they say. <laughs> Uh, these football games to bring them to Oklahoma County and spotlight some of these kids and their playing. I think this could be an onside kick, Wendell. I think you might be right. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, they got we the all. They got the, we can pan it back. Well, he's got the Vikings there. He's going to squib it to the backside and try and that's, fool them. And that's Corey Scott. Good job by Corey. Good hands there. They're bringing it to 49, 242. And you're right. We'll see some new numbers here, Wendell. Some clean jerseys. Number 87, John Smith. Now that's a name, that's my all name team. John Smith, six foot, 145 pounds is in there. Here he comes the wide out. He'll get to do some blocking. I don't know if they'll be doing uh, much throwing. I hope they block. What you don't want to do now is get Drew Roberts hurt. He's in there, but uh, of course, I think their offensive line is still on there. Nope, number 57, nope. Bobby Van Dyke is in there. Of course, you got to get some of these guys some snaps because they got to play next year. Kevin Curl there to fullback. Dixon at the tailback. Dixon, quick move left. Take it up to the 45. Bring up a second and five. The ball spotted at the 45. There's number 85. Ian Khalil is coming in at number six. Oh, now, I always hate when they do that. Number six is not listed on our program. And we like to tell who these kids are. Here's John Smith running off. Get a little wide pan on it. Ian Khalil will bring to the near side. And that fullback, number 30 for Fort Walton, Kevin Curls there now. Dixon there to tailback. They're going to let some of that time run, aren't they? Well, they can watch that clock in the end zone until it gets down. Roberts give Khalil. Wow, good hard running in there. Real good. Kevin Curl there off the left, off the right side. Look like John Brown on the tackle there. Running up in there behind Bobby Van Dyke. Uh, look like Scott Smith in there off the tackle. That's a good shot of Scott. I wish when they had a change in their jerseys up here because I got this program today and it's supposed to be hot off the press, number six. I don't know who that would be. Wish we could find out. We're sorry, we only can do what the coaches give us, guys. They'll give it again. Kevin Curl, the senior, 170 pounds, uh, five foot 11. Brant Busby on the tackle for the Tornadoes. Well, you would like to have give it, gotten the first down there. <laughs> if you got the first down, the game's over. I don't, I, unless uh, they don't have a uh, timeout. Oh, we get on, get on TV. No, it, no, that's, that's the other us. end. You still can't see. That's the other end. Yeah. We're on this end. We, oh, it is? <laughs> We're not going to make the TV tonight. Well, you'd have made it if you'd come to my pregame show. I was out there helping the, Oh, there you go. Let me. There's my last plug for the, the seafood right. festival going on in Destin out there this weekend, Sunday after the replay. Make sure you go on out there and check them out. Lots of fun, lots of food, lots of everything for the Destin Chamber of Commerce at the Destin Seafood Festival. And the thing about it, uh, it's been a great night here, Alan. It's uh, been a good homecoming, a good victory for the Vikings. We'd also like to ask you to, again, uh, the sponsor of my pregame show, Bellissimo's Pasta and Pizza on Beale Parkway, right next to Kmart Shopping. They give the uh, promotional considerations for them. And, and you uh, know what? They're open all week long. 
go down there and visit Susan, and they'll fix you up with the, some of the best Italian food in this area. Don't now you can tell them that we sent you down there. I don't know if I'd give you any discounts or whatever, but boy, it sure is nice for you to just tell them you heard it on Emerald Coast Cable Television. They're supposed to go down to the Belisa Mo's Pizza. I'll give you a free coat. Well, there it is. You think what they will? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they will. They will. <laughs> they will. I'm sure. I'm tell them I said so. Wendell Brock said so. Yeah. Wendell, <laughs> homecoming. It's always sweeter when you win. The Vikings, what's their record now? 5 and 0. Oh. Yeah. 5 and 0. Oh. Going to play next week. Look like they headed to. Um, Tate. That'll be a tough football game. District game. Tate's got a good football team this year. A real tough matchup. Fort Walton came out tonight, and they did exactly what the game plan called for. The coaches did a great job of preparing. I think they would have liked to have uh, not given up as many points, but they've faced one of the best quarterbacks they've faced all year. They threw the ball well and caught it. We'd like to congratulate uh, the Golden Tornadoes from Mississippi. We welcome down here. We're going to try to send this tape to them and uh, we hope we're going to go up there next year, and we hope they've enjoyed our visit. Like I said, next week, let's go out, Vikings, support the Tate, us versus the Tate, because that's a big ball game for us next week. And he'll have a history lesson from all the old alumni on his <laughs> tape. I think he'll get tired of hearing that. Another evening of Emerald Coast Cable Television and high school football. The final score, the Vikings of Fort Walton Beach High School, 45, the Watkins Tornadoes, 27. For Alan Winslet, Wendell Brock, and Aaron Brock, along with our best buddy, Rick McNulty, down the truck, I want to thank you for tuning in, and good night.